Okay. Item number 41. So, it's a combination of both fresh and salty water. So, A, brackish. B, saline or saline. C, inland or letter D, ocean. So, the answer for this one is letter A, which is brackish. So, this is a term, an objective term that we use to describe yung combination ng fresh tsaka salty water. So, this was already introduced to you during our session 5 on fisheries. So, next, let's move to number 42. It is directed towards maximizing the benefits of the production unit that is being managed. So, A, fish capture. B, fish cultivation. C, fishery management. Or letter D, fish conservation. So, which among these uh, four choices is directed towards maximizing the benefits? The correct answer is letter C, which is fishery management. So, here in fishery management, it is somehow all-encompassing. So, hindi lang siya. If you look at the different choices, uh, the question, if you, if you look at the different choices, only yung literacy or yung fishery management is directed towards maximizing the benefits of a fish stock, Ayan. of a production unit. So, let's move to number 43. Which of the following is an example of a poultry animal? Which of the following is an example of a poultry animal? A, dogs. B, a foal. C, rabbit. Or letter D, guilt. So, the correct answer is letter A, which is dogs. So, I hope na alam nyo tong uh, terms, which are foal and guilt. Ayan. So, yung foal... It is a young horse. It is a young horse. Young horse. Of course, rabbit. And then you guilt. It is a young pig. So it's a young pig, female pig. So in your technical term for guilt. Okay. Next, so these Spanish goats have no, have short or no ears. So A, La Mancha, B, uh, Nubians, C, Saanen, or letter D, Alphines. So ito, it, this is a very unique characteristic of this breed of goat. So tatandaan nyo, these Spanish goats have short or no ears. The answer is letter A, which is La Mancha. So I hope also na meron din kayong listahan ng mga breeds that we are discussing. And of course, you can do your own research on the other breeds of different farm animals such as chicken. Actually, tingin ko mayroon ako binigay na listahan dati. Mayroon ako binigay. So sa cattle, sa swine, sa chicken, sa ducks, sa goat even, meron din yata ako na ibigay dati. We will discuss that once again in our final coaching. And I hope na magkaroon tayo ng parang summary ng lahat ng mga na i-discuss natin for the past sessions. Ayan. So, this one is a characteristic ng Spanish goats. So, it is La Mancha. So, number 45, a squid specifically is a blank. A, mollusks. B, elasmo branch. C, Tolios or letter D cephalopod. So squid specifically is a blank. So specifically, we must go to the to the most specific uh choice dito sa uh, item na to. Then that is cephalo. Actually, squid is also a member of the class Mollusca. Yan. It is also a member of, of the mollusk, but specifically 
it is a cephalopod. A mollusk actually is a phylum. Yeah. So it is actually a phylum pala. So uh, phylum mollusca is a very huge na isang phylum so from gastropods katulad ng snail at saka slugs ayon hanggang sa mga uh, creatures na nasa sea. Like for example, ito nga yung ating uh, Squid, octopus, yung mga yan. So, it's a very a large phylum. Okay? So, next, let's have number 46. A fungus that, it, that is a blank depends on its host for existence. So, I think this is a repeat of what we have discussed kanina. It depends on its host for its existence. A, obligate. B, facultative. C, dependent, or letter D, saprophytic. So the answer for this one is letter A, which is obligate. So again, kapag sinabing obligate, kailangan niya yung host niya para mabuhay siya ng tuluyan. Facultative naman, it can survive even in the absence of the host. So kahit wala siyang host, it can uh, survive in a specific place. Ganun. Letter C, dependent. Dependent is Uh, I think it's just a confusion. Yan, yung term na dependent dyan. And of course, yung sa prophetic. Sa prophetic, uh, live and feed on dead organic materials and obtain nutrition for their growth. So they live and feed on dead organic materials and obtain nutrition for their growth. So number 47, which of the following is not a living organism. Which of the following is not a living organism? A. Virus. B. Lice. C. Fungi. Or letter D. Bacteria. So, the answer for this one is actually virus. So, virus is actually not a living organism because it needs a host. It needs a host para maging effective siya. So, viruses are the smallest of all the microbes. They are said to be so small that 500 million rhinoviruses, which causes the common cold, could fit into the head of a pin. So, sobrang liit nga nila. They are unique because they are only alive and able to multiply inside the cells of, another, of other living things. So, from, the, from this definition itself, we can say that a virus always needs a host. Diba? So, the cell... Uh, they multiply in, is called the host cell. Ayan. So the, it is called the host cell. A virus is made up of a core genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and it is surrounded by a protective coat called a capsid, so which is made up of protein. So sometimes the capsid is surrounded by an additional spiky coat called the envelope. So capsid, that's meron pang envelope. Envelope. So, yung envelope ay yung spiky coat. So, may protective coat na capsid. And then sometimes, in the cases of some virus, meron silang spiky coat. So, viruses are able of latching onto host cells and getting inside them. So, uh, just a reminder, ayan, virus is not a living organism. Kasi kailangan niya ng host para mag-survive. At mag-multiply. Okay, next, number 48, which is not considered a pest. A, earthworms, B, humans, C, rats, or letter D, worm. So the answer for this one is letter A, which is earthworms. Actually, earthworms are beneficial to a specific soil because to soil systems because it encourages drainage and at the same time, it adds on nutrient din sa ating soil. Yung worm in letter D naman could be considered as a pest because it could be a cutworm. ba? Diba? So kanina, we have mentioned different types of worms. So isa doon yung cutworm. So sa cutworm, pwede siyang 
mag-invest or mag-cut yung mga, yung mga caterpillar, mga ganyan, mag-tanggal ng leaves o kaya mag, mag-cut ng leaves on their ground level. Yung rats naman, it is actually considered as a vertebrate pest. Ayan, kasi it also infests Uh, for yung rice fields natin, ayan, may mga rats din talaga that infest sa rice fields. So, kung kinakain nila yung grains, kaya dinedestroy nila yung uh, mga halaman itself. So, yung, let, yung letter B naman human, actually we are also considered as pests because we can, we can also uh, harm yung ating mga crops. Ayan, so, kapag kunwari, merong mechanical damage kapag sinabi mechanical damage ito yung nagagawa like wounding ganyan so we are also considered as a pest and yeah specifically also a vertebrate pest so next number 49 crop insects sucks juice fruit fruit juice and foliage juice from fruit and foliage. To control, you must spray A, malathion, B, bromide, C, parathion, or letter D, chlordane. So again, this is just a review of the, differ- of the different uh, chemicals that are being used in crop protection. So the answer for this one is letter A, which is malathion. So kapag insects, ayan, malathion. If you will notice what we are doing here as we go further and further in this, Uh, integrated session uh, we are uh, repeating some of the concepts because I also believe in the principle of repetition Ayan. so meron ta in studying meron din dong principle of repetition para mas magkaroon ng uh, bigger or mas firm na chunk ng knowledge so when we repeat uh, specific Uh, items or when we repeat specific knowledge in general over and over again, perhaps every day or every week, we are uh, making that brick or, or that wall of knowledge firmer. Ayan. So, kaya repetition is also a key. So, I, I also encourage you ngayon, perhaps as you review mula dati pa, ganyan, Anong tawag dito? You are now repeating some of the concepts that you have learned for the past months as you review for the let this uh, coming September. So, yeah. Next, number 50. So, that's just a segue of a specific study tip that I could give you. So, number 50. Uh, termites are controlled by spraying with A. Fumigants, B. Chlordane, C. Azadrine, or D. Fun- fungi. So, uh, if you're paying attention for, sa mga past items, I've actually given yung answer dito. So, I hope that you are answering it right. So, the correct answer is letter B, which is chlordane. So, again, chlordane is used for termites. Fumigants is for rats, tsaka, uh, so mga rodents, tsaka ver- vertebrate, pests. Azadrine is for yung marami, yung aphids, mites, leaf miners, yung mga yan. So, yun yung kinokontrol ng acid rain. Whereas yung fungi, it is not actually a means of uh, to control, but it is actually the one that is being controlled in crop protection. So, ang fungi, it is, called, it, it is considered as a pest, as a biological pest. Okay. Let's go to number 51. So which of the following is the a weakness of an entrepreneur? So A, willingness to learn. B, creativity. C, bahala na attitude. Or letter D, patience. So obviously, in the choices, you could answer letter C, which is bahala na attitude. If you will recall in our session on agri-marketing and entrepreneurship strategies, we have tackled planning planning as a key concept in establishing a specific enterprise or a specific uh, business. Ayan. So, planning is, is actually a really essential step. As, as if you will recall, uh, I, I also presented uh, in one of our sessions a, 
uh, BMC model. So mayroong business canvas model. And I also presented, or at least kinuwento ko yung, I think kinuwento ko, kinuwento ko yung aking journey sa uh, aking enterprise. Ayun, so uh, planning will always be there. Ayun dapat yung pinakaunang ginagawa. You need to plan. Uh, planning not only for the enterprise or your financial plan, activity plan, everything, but also contingency plan. When we say contingency plan, you need to look at the different threats or the different weaknesses nga of your specific enterprise. So kapag tinignan mo yung mga weakness mo at yung mga possible threats, for example, rising prices. So that is a, a threat. Kasi kapag tumaas yung prices, so anong paano ka makakakuha ng iyong mga kailangan? Paano ka makakakuha ng iyong mga raw materials for a specific enterprise? Diba? So, tataasan mo ba agad yung presyo mo or what? So, you need to have a contingency plan for that. Na kapag nangyayari na ang isang threat sa iyong enterprise, kapag you are now experiencing uh, negative uh, force in the market, ayun. so what will you do as a business owner? What will you do as an entrepreneur? So, you also need to plan for that. So, even in of course in farm in farm businesses sa mga orchards or sa mga orchards ayun so you also need to plan what uh, kung pa, kung gaano katagal yung production ng isang orchard when we say orchard ito yung mga parang farms na parang farms ito yung mga farms na nag-house ng mga fruit trees so it means prutas yung inaano mo tas ilang years pa yan bago mamunga. So, you need to have contingency plan or, or you need to have a plan kung paano mo mamamaximize ang yield o ang harvest ng iyong uh, farm. Paano mo mamamaximize yun? Magtitinda ka ba ng, magtatalim ka ba sa gilid ng mga other crops na mas madaling uh, na mas madaling tumubo? Or what will you do? Magtitinda ka rin ba ng other uh, commod- commodities? Ayan. So, those are things that you need to have as an entrepreneur. And of course, in the planning stage pa lang, dapat meron na yung mga iyan. So, yeah, that's, that's it. Number 52. So, the public control and maintenance of various fisheries where fish and fishery products are derived is A, uh, capture, fish capture, B, fish cultivation, C, fish propagation or letter D fish fish conservation so again for this item you need to look at the clues or the context clues or the terms that are in the question so you can see there control and maintenance so when we say maintenance you are also conserving them so this is called fish conservation public control and maintenance of various fisheries where fish and fishery products are derived. So maintenance, conserve. Number 53. Examples of poultry are listed below except A, ducks, B, quail, C, rabbit, or letter D, pigeons. So again, uh, you can easily answer rabbit. Diba? Kasi... You, you will just look at their appearance. So, alin lang ba dito yung naiiba? So, you could, answer, you, you could uh, easily answer that. So, what if naman sa question na to ang nakalagay ay yung mga scientific names nila? O, ba? So, dapat knowledgeable din tayo sa mga scientific names nila. Okay? So, as a review, yung docs, it can be Anas Platerinkos Anas, platirinkos, or kairina muscata. Quail is kotornix, kotornix. Rabbit is okti.
Oricto, sorry, Oricto. Oricto lagus. Uniculus. And pigeons are Columbia. Libya. Okay. Or Kolumba, Libya. Kolumba, Libya. Okay. So that are the scientific names of these. Uh, farm animals. Okay. Number 54, the gradual transformation of species. This is gradual. The gradual transformation of species, which of the following. Yeah. So A, genetic drift. B, combination. C, isolation or letter D, natural selection. So gradual transformation. Those are the keywords. Correct answer is natural selection. So this happens in us. Kung sino yung pinaka fetus, yung survival of the fetus. So ayan, sila yung nag, gradually na nagiging isang species. So, so genetic drift, genetic drift happens when nagkakaroon ng mga external forces. Like for example, typhoon. So kapag kunwari na may isang ecosystem tas na sa landarang bagyo, so most probably merong mga ma-eradicate ma na species doon. So the, there is a genetic drift na biglang naging ganito na lang sila. Ayun. Yung isolation naman, ito yung, uh, for example, magta-travel yung isang organism towards a specific environment na, na sila lang yung nandun. Yeah, so that is called isolation. Na for si natural selection. Okay. Let's go to number 55. So which method of raising seedlings is used to purposely shorten the seed bedding period? A. Wet bed method. B. Dry bed method. Seed dappled method or letter D seed box seed box method. So this is also used here in the Philippines. This is uh, actually in the website of the International Rice Research Institute. So the answer for this one is letter C, which is dappled method. So if you can see in the illustrations, dito sa right side. So wet bed method, kita mo na may tubig. Dry bed, ayan, dry naman yung ano, yung bed, yan. Yung dapog method, ayan, ito yung ginagawa niya. So this one, para ma-shorten ang seed bedding period. Pinapatubo na agad sa ganyan. Then of course yung seed box method. Almost same with the, I think, parang combine siya ng and dry. Ayan, dry. Okay. Number 56. This breed is noted for bacon type with long smooth side of carcass. So, bacon type, A, filamine, B, thumbwort, C. Anglo Nubian or letter D. Brangus. So, bacon type, this should be a swine breed. Diba? So, which among these? Actually, if, if you, have re, you have already reviewed your animal science, you can notice that these are different farm animals. So, filamine is a breed of a duck. Tamworth is actually, is actually a breed of swine. And so, baboy ito. And 
Ito yung ginagamit for bacon type. Anglo Nubian is a goat. And of course, yung brangus natin, which is the a combination of uh, Brahman at Angus, is a cattle breed. Alright? So, duck, goat, cattle. So, yung tamworth, ayun lang yung bacon type. Ayun lang yung capable. Or, ito lang yung pwedeng gawing bacon. Kasi siya is wine. Okay? Number 57. Number 57. The hair of the goat called mohair originated in Ankara. Wow. Ankara, Turkey. So both sexes are horned and open-faced with long locks of hair over the, the rest of the body. So I, uh, I encourage you to take note of this uh, goat. Kasi ito ay... Uh, karakteristik din niya yung may mahabang hair. So, A, Angora, B, Saanen, C, Alphine. So, letter D, Anglo, Nubian. So, the answer for this one, I, letter A, which is Angora. So, here are the different uh, photos of the breeds that were mentioned here in this item. So, this one is Angora. So, ayan yung kanyang karakteristik. Tandaan nyo siya, tandaan nyo yung itsura niya. And that is also called mohair. Yan. So marami siyang hair. So this one is sa anin. This one is sa anin. So it's white. Tapos medyo payat yung uh, facial structure. And merong uh, long ears. So next, yung alphines. Yan, yung, yung alphines naman, it has horns. Ayan yung isa sa karakteristik niya. So ang mohair o ang, ang angora is papaganan yung kanyang horns. Whereas yung sa alphines is papa pa horizontal kumbaga. Tapos meron pa rin siyang ear. And it is also black and white as you can notice. And yung Anglo-Nubian, ang karakteristik naman yan ay may drooping na ears. So it means ang, ang ears niya ay papa, papababa. Parang ganito. Nakaganyan. Ayan. Nakagalas ito yung kanyang ubo. Ayan. So take note of these different Uh, breeds of goat. Okay. Next, before we take a short break, this rabbit is a good meat breed because of the type and size. This adorable breed originated from a color mutation, color in a litter of Havana rabbits in 1934. So they are noted for vivid colors and sleek na coat. So, sleek na coat. So, vivid colors. So, shiny yan. So, alin sa mga yan? A, Rex. B, Angora. C, Satin. Or letter D, California. So, the correct answer from the term itself, it's letter C, which is Satin. There is also a clue. If you are familiar with the Satin cloth, Ayan, yung satin cloth ay shiny, di ba? So, uh, that could be a clue. But uh, if you want to really know more about these different types of uh, rabbits, so here are the different breeds. So, yung Rex, ayan yung Rex. Um, cute siya. <laughs> if you will notice, yung eyes niya is very circle. Ayan. And it has a parang spotted na... Uh, skin, white and brown. Uh, yung angora naman, it is also a hairy. Tama ba? Hairy din yung ito. Oh, angora rin. So kapag angora, ang karakteristik nila most of the time ay hairy. So that is the angora uh, breed of rabbit. And of course, yung satin, which is, if you can see, uh, medyo shiny yung kanyang uh, skin. Yeah. So yun yung sinasabi na vivid at saka sleek coat. And of course, yung California. So sa California, ang karakteristik naman nila is yung nose. Nila is merong black. 
pigmentation as well as their ears and their toes. Yeah, so the, those are some pictures of the different rabbit breeds. So before we move on to number 59 and almost, I think we're about to finish na rin in a few minutes. So let's have a five-minute break for you to digest the information na, na, na present sa inyo.
Okay, so let's move. Let's move. Let's go back to our discussion. Number. This is number 59. So number 59, normal incubation period of the egg of a chicken is blank weeks. So A4, B3, C5, or letter D6. So if you will remember in our session on animal science, I have displayed a picture depicting the different stages of uh, incubation with a, an illustration ng candling. So if you can remember, meron, ako inilag, uh, meron akong define na term which is candling. So essentially, yung candling is pag uh, flash ng light sa egg mismo para makita kung ano na yung uh, stage niya in the incubation period. So if you will remember in that specific infographic, I have displayed 21 na eggs and each egg is a representation of what happens for each day so the answer for this one is letter b which is three three weeks kasi uh in of course yun, do the math uh three weeks seven days so 21 uh days yun. okay number 60 so, omega-3 is a high-grade polyunsaturated acid present in fish blank. So, again, this is a, another review of an item that we have tackled during our fishery session. Ayan, so, A, fats, B, bones, C, fins, or letter D, proteins. So, I hope that you're answering this right. The correct answer is letter A, which is fats. So, this is the reason why, di ba, sa mga lata ng sardinas, we are uh, often seeing... Uh, omega-3, rich in omega-3, fatty acid. Ano, doon pa lang, fatty acid, fats. Alright? Next. Oh, here is another item that we have already discussed from our fishery session. So, which among the species of prawn is a white prawn? So, I have displayed different images on this item. So, A. Pineus semiscolatus, B. Pineus indicus, C. Pineus monodon, or letter D. Pineus mergersis. So, the answer for this one is letter D, which is indicus. So, yung indicus, kaya siya, kaya indicus yung kanyang species, species uh, name, it's because it is from India. So, this is also called the white Indian prawn. Ayan. So, doon pala sa pangalan niya, ah, okay, white prawn siya. So, here you need to remember that a white prawn is seen or pwede makita sa India. Para kapag lumabas to sa inyong licensure exam, magin ah, indicus, India. Okay. So, if you, again, another review of the different uh, characteristics of this prawn species, yung sa Pineus semiscolatus, you can notice that it is somehow white with stripes of brown. Yan. Tapos ang Pineus monodon naman, which is this one, hindi ko pala na-label wait now. This is A, B, C, plus D. So, yung letter C, which is yung Pineus monodon, ay brown naman siya, essentially brown, then meron siyang stripe na uh, creamy white. Whereas, yung Pineus mergersis is letter D na essentially it is an orange to red na prawn. So, yeah. Okay, let's go to number 62. For number 62, a day old chicks with male and female separated. So, day old chicks with male and female separated. So, A, a baby chick, B, layer, C, sexed chick, or letter D, broiler. This is a technical term that you need to know in the poultry part of animal science. The correct answer is sexed chicks. So let us discuss every uh, item in this, every item, every choice dito sa item na to. So letter A, baby chicks. So baby chick 
is a chick that just hatch, usually one to seven days old. So one to seven days old, that can, uh, can still be considered as a baby chick. A layer, on the other hand, is a female bird kept for egg laying production. A layer is a mother, mother na siya, na kinikip para sa egg laying production. So it means this is specialized for egg production. Yan ang tawag doon ay layer. On the other hand, yung letter D, which is broiler, ito naman is ginagamit for meat production. A young meat bird chicken of either sex butchered around 4 to 8 weeks of age. So a broiler can uh, either be a male or a female. Yeah. So yung layer, it is uh, used uh, specifically for egg production and broiler naman is for meat production. Okay. Next. Number 43. So number 43, this goat originated in Switzerland with long or short hair. So ang tandaan nyo siguro dito is yung Switzerland. The breed has completely white short hair with occasional black spots on the other ears and nose. So A, Alphines, B, La Mancha, C, Nubian, or letter D, Saanen. So the answer for this one is letter D, which is Saanen. So you can remember that, that Saanen uh, is from, Switch, from Switzerland. Uh, so that is something that you can take note of. And of course, kapag naman yung sa kanyang physical characteristics, it can be noted as short hair with occasional black spots on the other ears and nose. When we say other, this is parang ito yung breast part niya. Okay? Next is number 64. So shark and rays belong to class blank. So again, this is another repetition of what we have uh, tackled on fisheries. A. Amphibian. B. Uh, Chondrich tights. C. Ostage tights. Or letter D. Simalas pidor. Cephalas pidomor. So the correct answer for this one is letter B, which is Chondrich tights. So I hope that you, you that you already answered that correctly. You have answered that correctly. So next. Number 65. So it is unquestionably one of the best duck breeds to raise for eggs. These ducks have been known to lay as many as 340 eggs per year. So A, Pekin, B, Anglo-Nubian, C, Kaki Campbell, or letter D, Royun. So for this one, the answer is letter C, which is Kaki Campbell. So to discuss the different items as a choices, yung Pekin, it is not raised for egg production, but it is rather raised for a uh, meat. It is raised for meat production. So ang interest nila dyan in breeding that specific breed is to get meat. Yung Anglo-Nubian as well, I hope na alam niyo na ngayon kasi ilang beses siya na, nabanggit sa session na to, ay isang breed ng goat. Anglo-Nubian is a, a breed ng goat. Yung Royun naman, so Royun is a heavyweight breed of domesticated duck which is raised primarily for decoration, uh, exhibition, or as general purpose ducks. So it's for decoration, exhibition. So more Specifically, these are uh, this is a breed na for aesthetic purposes. Sa 
recreational dito decorative purpose so i was disconnected <laughs> Okay, Ayan, so yung pekin is raised for meat. Uh, Anglo-Nubian is not a breed of ducks, but it is a breed of uh, goat. Kaki Campbell is the one that is raised for eggs. And Royun is a breeded, breeded, is a breed that is for decoration, exhibition, or as general purpose. Ducks. So I hope na nakuha yun kasi nawala ako. So next, sana wag naman mawala. Number 66, it is the enzymatic digestion of cells by the action of its own enzymes. And it is mostly, it mostly occurs in dying or dead cells. So it is the enzymatic digestion of cells by the action of its own enzymes. And it mostly occurs in dying or dead cells. So A, redox reaction. B, glycolysis. C, autolysis. Or letter D, auto-oxidation. Actually, if you have your uh, foundation on the basic sciences, you could uh, dito, filter the choices. So una, redox reaction is a topic on chemistry, on general chemistry. So an oxidation reduction or redox reaction is a type of chemical reaction that involves a transfer of electrons between two species. So, nagkakaroon ng transfer. In glycolysis naman, it is more on the botany, botany aspect. So, glycolysis, uh, glycolysis is a process of breaking down glucose. Actually, in general, biochemistry pala meron to. So, Uh, this happens during cellular respiration and it is actually the first step of cellular respiration. Breaking down of glucose. And of course, yung autolysis, ayun yung answer natin sa item na ito. So it is the enzymatic digestion of cells by the action of its own enzymes. And it mostly occurs in dying or dead cells. So that is autolysis. So this item pala is here because it is uh, from... The fisheries, fisheries field. Ayan. So this happens. Uh, then after that, nagkakaroon na rin ng uh, rigor mortis, which is the stiffening of the uh, tissues, shocking cells. Ayan. So letter D is the oxi auto-oxidation. So auto-oxidation, sometimes auto-oxidate. Uh, it refers to oxidation brought about by reactions with oxygen at normal temperatures without the intervention of flame or electric sparks. So this term is usually used to describe the degradation of uh, organic compounds in air at ambient temperature. So all of these uh, things are pertaining to our reaction, but it will re really be a big help if you will know at first kung saan ginagamit itong mga ito because you could uh, filter, use that as a filter in answering this and of course, eliminating items from the choices. Okay, number 67. Organism have different classification which is not a main classification of organisms. A, eukarya. B, Archaea or letter D, C, bacteria or letter D, virus. So the answer for this one is letter D, which is virus. Actually, eukarya, archaea, and bacteria are the three main classifications of organisms. And yung virus, as, we, as what we have discussed kanina, is, an, is not a living organism, but rather it needs a host in order for it to multiply and develop. Okay. Kailangan niya ng host. So next, number 68. Most common crawling insects that usually visits the fruit tree is A, bugs, B, aphids, C, caterpillar, or letter D, lice. 
So crawling insects, this is the fruit tree. Uh, the correct answer is letter A, which is bugs. So there is actually a number of bugs, marami mga bugs na ganyan, na nagkukrawl sa mga fruit trees. Ayan. Yung caterpillar, it doesn't uh, survive well sa trees kasi sa, ang gusto niyan is kulay yung fresh, yung mga, anong tawag dito? Yung fresh na, or yung succulent na stems. O yung meron siyang pwedeng kunin sa stems pa lang. So, yan. Kaya minsan, if you will pop a caterpillar, may kita niyo kulay green yung lalabas sa kanya. It's because it really wants yung mga fresh na leaves. Okay? Number 69. So, wooden tongue is characterized by inability of the cattle to eat excessive salivation and chewing motion of the tongue. It is caused by the bacteria A. L. Harjo, B. Actinobacillus, C. Elpomona, or letter D. Actinomycosis. So again, add this to your list ng, mga, ano, ng technical term or mga diseases, especially in animal science. So you, the answer for this one is letter B, which is Actinobacillus. So yung letter A or yung L. Harjo, it is actually a leptospira na bacteria. And so it, the infection arises from contact with infected urine ng leptospirosis as with, we have mentioned kanina sa mga pinakaunang uh, items. So either yung urine or yung products of abortion. So that is transferred through that. Yung Letter C, which is yung L. pomona or Leptospira pomona, it causes reproductive diseases in pigs in many other parts of the world with significant numbers of abortions and stillbirths. So kapag sinabi nating abortions, ayun, from the, from the, Ayan, so I'm back. I apologize for the unstable network, unstable connection. And so again, your L. pomona or Leptospira pomona causes reproductive diseases in pigs in many other parts of the world with significant numbers of abortions and stillbirths. So ito yung hindi okay or hindi uh, normal yung kanilang mga babies. And thus, nagre-result sa ganun. Okay. And of course, yung, uh, yung actinomycosis, actually, this is the not a causative agent. Hindi siya causative agent kung hindi siya yung disease itself. So, actinomycosis is usually caused by the bacterium actinomyces israeli. So, this is a common organism found in the nose and the throat. So, it normally does not cause disease. So, yung letter D, ayun yung mismong situ... Uh, condition. So it is not a causative agent. So perhaps I will just run uh, through the the next items kasi ang bagal ng aking internet connection. So number 70. And we're five uh five items away na lang naman pala. So the formation of a new genetic trait from the mutations in organism, so which among these following technologies uses that A, embryo transplant B, tissue culture C, asexual reproduction or letter D, exposure to radiation so for this one this is actually a type of breeding as well so in plant breeding we are we also have what we call mutation breeding so it is sometimes referred to as variation breeding so ang ginagawa dito is yung mga seeds ay ina-expose sa it's either sa chemicals or sa radiation or sa enzymes para makapag-produce ng mga mutants yun so in that random na anong tawag dito na process don ang objective is to generate mutants with desirable traits 
na pwedeng i-breed sa other cultivars, na pwedeng i-breed sa mga existing varieties na nandito sa atin. So that is called mutation breeding. So plants created using mutagenesis. Ayan. So these are called, the technical term for them is mutagenic plants or mutagenic seeds. Ayan. So uh, formation of new genetic trait, actually it does not happen in tissue culture and asexual reproduction. And of course, in embryo transplant then, kasi hawak pa rin niya yung traits of their parentals. So, in tissue culture, meron tayong tinatawag dyan na true to type. Uh, which means kung ano yung characteristics ng mismong tissue na inilagay mo dun, it will also be the characteristic of your uh, plantlet. Same through with the sexual reproduction. So, yung uh, characteristic that you... Uh, have sa mother plant mo is will will be the same characteristic that will be uh, transferred kapag in kunyari stem cutting kapag inilagay mo na yung stem cutting sa isang bagong soil or sa isang water container it will carry the same trait na meron kung saan siya sa mother plant niya and, and em- embryo transplant is just an in vitro uh, fertilization na isang technique Ayan. So, exposure to radiation, ayun yung answer natin. So, next. Humans reproduce when an ovum is combined with a sperm leading to the development of an embryo form reproduction called <laughs> development of an embryo and it is called A, budding, B, binary fission, C, fertilization, or letter D, asexual reproduction. So, the answer for this one is letter C, which is fertilization. Actually, the terms, the other terms, budding is a term that is used in crop science. Binary fission happens in bacteria. And ayun, sa mga, uh, tama, sa, sa mga bacteria. And yung asexual reproduction, it happens sa plants then. So we have discussed uh, segments of these different concepts. And I hope na you were able to distinguish them from one another. Okay? So here, number 72, let's move to agricultural management, uh, agricultural Economics, ayan, sa marketing strategies, ayan. So, loans are secured by blank. A, referral. B, character. C, signature. Or letter D, collateral. So, dito, you can also, you can even use uh, an elimination method. So, first, of course, loans cannot be secured by just referral, by just character, and by just having a signature doon. So, of course, you need letter D, which is co-lateral. So, to discuss this uh, you know, further, so when we say collateral, yeah, it means something provided to a lender as a guarantee of repayment. So, kailangan nilang magkaroon ng guarantee na, ah, okay, mag-buy it after some time. So, if you take out a loan or and if you take out a loan to buy a car or a house or a specific farm equipment or what, the loan agreement usually states that that specific commodity, that specific thing that you are, ano, is collateral that goes to the lender if the sum isn't paid. So this is something that is very uh, evident, lalo na ngayon in the agriculture sector, sa farm marketing strategies natin. Of course, marami tayong mga ang government, marami silang inaanong mga loans, ganyan, for our farmers. So, this is also a key concept that you need to be familiarized with. Okay? Let's move to number 73. Number 73. Where do prawn live and spawn? So, this is another repetition of, a, of an item that we discussed in fisheries. A, brackish water, B, fresh water, C, estuarine, or letter D, marine water. So the answer for this one, I hope that you're getting this right, is letter B, which is fresh water. Okay? 
fresh water prawn. So number 74. So activities being undertaken in the factory that result in a product is called blank. So A, packing, B, dressing, C, manufacturing, or letter D, technology. So again, it results in a product undertaken in a factory. So you are manufacturing something. Thus, the answer is letter C, which is manufacturing. So here, you cannot answer letter D because the question is activities being undertaken. So when we say activities being undertaken, this has something to do, or this must be a verb, diba? So packing, dressing, manufacturing. So the, those three items could be uh, three of your choices. But if we are talking about a product or the specific or the technical term that you have for this specific process, the most uh, formal or the most used term that we use is letter C, which is manufacturing. And last, number 75, the process by which larvae of muscle permanently attach themselves to solid substrates. So this is called A, attachment, B, clinging, C, patting, or letter D, spatial. So actually, this is another technical term that you need to uh, take note in the area of fisheries. The answer is letter C, which is spotting. So that is the term na kapag yung mga muscle na yung mga muscle ay dumikit na sa isang uh, rock perhaps or sa isang uh, debris dun sa baba ng, ano, ng water. So that is called spotting. So it is a process. Ayan. So again, uh, this is session 7. And for further questions that you have, you can uh, reach me through uh, Messenger. Actually, I am... Ayan. you. It is open. So mag-message request lang kayo doon for further clar clarification. Or kapag merong mga mali or yes, mga mistakes ako na commit here in this presentation, in this recording, you could... Uh, raise it sa akin sa messenger then I will be very happy to correct them in the comment section when I post this sa ating Facebook group so that's it I'm finishing this one early because I have a very unstable internet connection so thank you very much I hope to see you in the next sessions